from filming this at warm-up of a goat. It's not an instruction video as such, but it's for those people who might just want to see the uncut version. I'm doing this as a warm-up because I want to um, do a live stream and so to smooth out any wrinkles before I go live so that I can teach people and also offer them a finished gold painting to look at. I'm going to do this painting for me so there's not going to be much talk through it. It might be the odd bit. But where I need to think I probably won't be talking so much. So it'll be a lot less chatty than my usual videos. So if you're okay with that then carry on watching. I've just got a nice cup of tea, had a couple of biscuits and it's a nice sunny day. I've walked the dog, did all my errands and chores yesterday. So I just want to do a nice bit of quiet painting now. I'm sure a lot of you find it quite hard to carve out time to paint, you know, family life, uh, life in general. You've got to do other things apart from painting, obviously. So, uh, I just like to try and clear the deck so that I got peace and quiet to get on with this. This paper isn't stretched. This is a piece of scrap. It's the back of an old painting. So it's going to, you know, bl uh, it's going to peak and trough. It's going to belly. So uh, I'm just going to have to live with that. <clears throat> I've got a much bigger paint, uh, a much bigger print out of the goat's head here. I've made it large so that I can see what's happening. So I'll uh, put that in front of me there. This is just a dark made of uh, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That's a bit too clumpy already. I want to soften that away. <clears throat> Maybe have a few little breakaway, <laughs> breakaway hairs there on the goat's face. And it, oh, it's gone, it's gone dry. So I want it to have a little smudgy area there where I can. <coughs> Drag in some sort of, of, of a, um, a beard, goat's beard. Much darker on the nose there. Just looking out for the darkest parts of the face. I'm just going to swoosh that up with my finger there. Right. The year is a lot paler than the rest of the face. <clears throat> Burnt Amber and French Ultramarine Blue. Quite viscous.
Cutting around the ear there. <clears throat> and a few more strokes of the beard on top of the soft area that I'd already painted. Palish area above the eye where it's catching some light. A few, um, I'm just going to put some markings, a bit of um, soft grey onto the ear just to give it a bit of darker tone. There's some white speckle in it in the ear, but uh, it starts off quite dark black under the eye, very dark under the mouth. Very dark. Right, now I'm heading into <clears throat> dry paper now, so I'm going to use a large flat brush, half inch brush, and wipe away that hard edge that's forming because I don't want that. So I'm going to wet the neck quite a way down, really wet it, and then get up into that black and pull that black line down so it fades away to nothing. So when I come to fuse the two parts of the body later on, I'm fusing into a soft edge. So again, this brush is wet. I'm dragging that down so that I got a gradual go from black to grey to white. Now I got a thirsty brush because I got a bit of a pedal there, get rid of that. <clears throat> right. I've got a very small brush now. I'm going to pick up some of the, pick up a few bits of grey and drag them across. Start putting the texture into these and pick up some of that black into these horns. Curved lines. I don't want to make them too obvious. Then I'm going to drag my brush, lay the brush flat and just drag it across like that. <coughs> Just softening out some black areas on the face. <clears throat> right, paint the other, paint the other 
uh, horn now. This is just grey again. There's a bit of a, a, a lit ridge on the top of this, so it's, it's mostly dark underneath. Oh, a bit of a darker black on the distant ear. Push a little bit of a stronger black there just to really separate those two horns. And because I'm painting this extra bit of dark in, um, it's, going, it's going over softly. More the black comes into the ear a little bit from the actual skull. Excuse me, the black travels in a bit to the ear like that. much darker there where that horn sits in the head <coughs> and there's a sort of arc that comes and from the forehead down above the eye which is quite a bit darker on the nose and then it's darker right under the nose there and then it's a bit paler at the, bo at the bottom of the lip there and darker right under where obviously it's going to go out of the light so <coughs> now that I've got that dark on. I need to soften it off, so smaller brush. I've moistened that a little bit and I flicked it. I've moistened it, squeezed out the water because this is very fine blending now. I'm blending that very black shadow up onto the muzzle of the goat's face. And blend this round as well because that <coughs> curves round from the top of the nose down to the side of the nose, just softening it a bit. I'm going to take some of this very dark and just flick it through just to dull, uh, darken this lighter area a bit more because it's a bit too jump, it's jumping out a bit too much. And maybe take some of these uh, stripes, uh, lines of the goat's horn off and then blend that away so it's a bit softer. <coughs> I need a much darker separation there between the ear and the head. I 
I'm saving this palish area to put to put the eye in. that area. So I'm going to put some yellow in there for the eye obviously. Yeah, this is too too bright, so I'm going to darken that over. I'm going to drag this brush flat over there just to give it a bit more texture and blend that soft grey in a bit more. <laughs> knock that, knock the nose in a bit. This piece of black travels up and joins with that real forehead dark patch as well. I'm going to take some of this, drag it up and over, up and over, up and over on the far horn and some dragging up from the near horn as well. Right now I need to redefine that line, the bottom line of this near horn a bit more. So I lost the distinction there a bit. And then carry some more of these darker. Lines over it. Ready to do the eye now. So look at me now. So all we've done so far is the head. Just really wanted to get that head going first, you know. Um, Timber, French ultramarine blue. I want to make that the line of his mouth, um, the opening of his mouth. I need to make that a bit better. Comes down there a bit. <coughs> yeah. In on that. I'm just looking at my big picture and seeing what the what the mouth does. It's very hard to see, isn't it? <clears throat> it's all black fur. There's a definite dark triangle down there, you see, in front of the eye. Have I got that? Yeah, I need to redo that as well. So we need to lift out. Bit of paler grey. Blend that up. So I've corrected the angle of the mouth now because it was far too straight across. Now I've pushed down a little sort of pucker of uh, puffy cheek there. So I'll put it down. 
And there's more of a triangle for that eye as well there. If you need. <coughs> yeah. So the mouth goes Blend that dark up and then blend that dark towards the nose a bit so it's not such a hard triangle shape. I'm just going to knock the white of that back a bit. Right, with a small thirsty brush now I'm just going to wipe away to suggest that goat's mouth extending towards the tip of his ear. <clears throat> right, let's put the yellow in for the eye. So I'm going to pick up some raw sienna. And I've noticed that there's a tiny bit of yellow, yellow, very pale yellow light bounce coming up from the ground under the goat's horn there. So I'm going to put some of that yellow light bounce at the bottom of the curve of the horn as well and drag it over, sort of feather it over, partly. Part of the way. So we've got a nice echo between the eye and the horn now. Okay. And I might moisten my little brush, pick up a bit more raw sienna and drop it in a bit more moist under the bottom of the horn and taper it across a bit more subtly again which will give more of a glow, a feeling of glow of warm light coming up from the ground as well. Right, so the eye now, I'm waiting for that to dry so that I can drop in the black iris at the black pupil, which is a sort of, it's going to be a slanty horizontal shape. And I got a, this, this, the light is shining on this, so I'm just waiting, it looks a bit strange. Yeah, that mouth, I don't like that mouth. The mouth should be more curved. It should be more curved down like that. Yeah, that's better. It was too straight, too horizontal. So I've got a small, moist brush now. This is not a very good brush. Um, I'm flicking that hard edge of black up into the muzzle a bit more to soften that edge so that the mouth looks more like it's sort of dropping down a little bit. That's a bit better. I'm just going to soften all that. Just taking my eye. That's better. Um, take some more of the black there as well. Right, let's get a good brush because that one is splitting all the time. Don't want that one. I've got a bit of a better brush now. It's just a size zero or size one. Pick up a bit of raw sienna. Oh, done the raw sienna. What am I talking about? Pick up a small bit of black. Now I want this to be quite viscous. I don't want it to run too far. I don't want it to run really at this point so I 
me get it off the light. Sorry about this reflected light. When you don't want light, it comes down, doesn't it? Let me, uh... Yeah, can you see that now? Okay, so there's the... Black pupil going in. I'm going to leave it at that, because it's so small, there's not a lot we can do with that. Right, so that's the head. Done. <clears throat> right. I'm going to take a photograph of that now, because uh, before I do any more work. Right, I'm going to let, this, this is a bit cool now, if I test it there, a bit cool, so I'm going to let it all dry and then we're going to paint the body. So you can leave it dry for at least half an hour or you can gently dry it with a hairdryer, I don't recommend that, drying naturally is best, okay, because the paints do dull, so do what you, you prefer. Right, it's bone dry now, so I'm going to zoom in and just... Make a correction on the eye. The, the the line above the eye is a bit too um, dark. It's a bit there's a bit of a white. If I can zoom in, there's a bit of a white line between the uh, the eye and the actual lid. So I'm going to moisten a very small half a quarter inch brush. I'm going to moisten it. And then dry it in my cloth so that it's ever so slightly damp and I'm going to use the corner of that just to fuse take some of the dark that's above the um, eyelid I'm, I'm so I'm pinching from this the darkest area I'm going back on top of there just to sort of fuse that whole area together a bit more gently and lose the corners of the goat size. So I'm picking some of this, so this is very subtle work, so I'm picking some of this thicker black paint up that I can just borrow from, from above the goat's eye and just dropping it with this slightly slightly damp very slightly damp brush and putting it in so just sort of soften things a, li a little bit right now the goat's mouth I'm not happy with <coughs> so it looks wrong so again with this little brush it's got hardly any moisture in there I'm going to slight use a slightly small rotating action and sort of smudge, smudge a little bit of a highlight into the mouth area. That's better already, isn't it? That line was just wrong. And blend that up into the nose. I'm turning my brush around using the other side now, which hasn't got much paint on it. And again, smudging a bit further along a slightly curved very soft curved area with a faint smudge it's faintly this upper lip now is faintly lighter than the look than the lip underneath and I think that's a softer muzzle I think that's a bit of a better muzzle than the one I had before <clears throat> so I'm going to get a photograph of that now as well as part of that stage. <sighs> right, one sec. Right, he's bone dry now, so I'm safe to wet the rest of the goat now, apart from the head. I'm going to wet the body, let's get him in tighter for you. Okay, so let's wet him with clear water. Shall 
So just clear water now going onto the goat and go up into the neck. I'm only wetting inside the goat, I'm not wetting any outside areas. just did a big splosh there, mop that up because where there's water the paint will flow so keep it all in the goat. I'm looking forward to this bit because I want to really splosh on some pale blue in areas evoke catching the skylight and give the goat a little bit of colour even though in reality <coughs> his body is white and black but I'm looking forward to painting that sort of um, curved part of his body like that and putting a little bit of shadow in and a little bit of highlight <coughs> even though it's white so I'll show you how I, I do that the trick is to always leave some part of the paper, you know, unpainted, as white as it can be, in other words, so that when the reader, but the viewer looks at it, it can see that, you know, there are parts of the goat that are white, and so it doesn't mind then if there's some highlights that might be blue evoking the sky above, or um, warm light bounce from the ground where the goat is lying. So you can see the moisture, can't you? Okay. It needs to go on, allow it to sink in. Preferably you'll be using cotton paper because wood pulp paper like Bockingford or Arte's uh, <coughs> or any of the sort of hobby craft or you know student papers, they're mostly wood pulp and they don't hold as much moisture for the length of time you need. And also they start to disintegrate when you do repeated washes like this. So I would use 100% cotton if you can afford it, even if you can't afford it at least try it so that you know what you're missing. <coughs> use the best stuff you've got. So you can see that moisture all over the goat, right? What we don't want is any big puddles. Unfortunately this is unstretched paper so I am getting a bit of dip in there. Right, the first thing I want to do is I'm just very excited to drop in some pale sort of turquoisey blue so whatever blue you've got that's sort of bit turquoise a bit violet something like that whatever pink you've got so it could be a cobalt blue or cerulean blue a little bit of ultramarine um, ultramarine violet something palish blue so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that in on the goat there But not on this left hand side. On the left hand side I'm going to bring in some raw sienna. It's a pale, pale raw sienna. See how pale that is to suggest some warm light bounce. Okay, so the rest of the goat, you know, is uh, uncoloured at the moment. Move into a smaller brush now. What I will do is just tip it, tip it back and so on. See, it's running out there. It's a little bit too wet, if truth be known, but this is my warm up. Uh, let it run back and forth a little bit, but don't let the blue and the yellow mix. In fact, with a bit of tissue, I'm going to rub out that central splurge of blue there. I'm going to take some of that away, get back to the white of the paper, but there's still a little hint of blue on there, and on his neck. So now I want to go for a rich black. So my brush isn't soaking wet. 
I don't want this to be very runny, I want it to be a bit gooey, a bit viscous. I want it to be a black, oh, too much blue there. I want it to be the similar black to the head so that it matches, you know, that's all I'm trying to do. A bit more water, like that's, that's what I would say is a pigmented mix, okay? It's not a viscous mix, it's just a bit runnier than that. So I'm going to bang this in now and put some in the tail area straight away because that's, uh, I want that to bleed, you know. And uh, do a few breakaway strokes in places for the goat's fur. And then tip that up now. See the moisture there? I'm going to tip it and just let it run up the goat's back. And while I got the goat uh, in this position, I'm going to see that's gone a bit dry now. Right, it's gone too dry, so I'm going to quickly add some moisture so that this black I'm putting in will run into a moist area. Yeah, it's, it's gone a bit too dry, you see. This is okay, this is bleeding nicely. <coughs> I'm going to just persevere now quickly and get some more black in. I want it to feather all down onto the onto the goat's back. And it's that curve and feathering that I really liked. See this is bleeding nicely now, I like that, it's quite natural. Um there's maybe one or two more flicks like that. And there. Okay, and then more. <coughs> oh, gone a bit brown. Back to the blue. Get the leg, the little leg in. That's See, what, what, when you go like that with watercolour, it leaves a blob, doesn't it? Right. So to avoid that, come at it, stroke inwards, very lightly, and you get less of a blob effect, okay? But I'm going to be tipping my board now and using my <coughs> spray bottle in a minute to get things running a bit more, so we'll get rid of that blob effect. And on the neck, I'm going to have a few breakaway bits of hair so that it's not solid. Okay, like that. <coughs> See why you need to use cotton paper? Because this is drying already and I did give it a good wetting. I could have given it a bit more, to be honest. Should have given it a bit more. So there's the goat's leg tucked in there under his body. Right, let's sort this out. So what I got now is my spray bottle. I'm going to tip my board and use a very one or two squirts of this and let it let it run. Just try one and see how that works and then Try another one and usually the second one gets the paint moving, yeah, see it's moving now, see that? Lovely soft fusion you're getting now, the black hide fur, and I want it to bleed a little bit onto the, you can use your fingernail as well if it's not coming, I quite like, I quite like that, okay, so, so then you lay it flat and it won't bleed, bleed anymore, right? Um, now, I want to get a tiny little bit of shadow in the bottom of the goat here. So I've got a tiny bit of soft grey on my brush. 
<clears throat> and I'm just putting it in that is curving there so I'm curving it there curving this way so I'm just trying to follow the shape of the goat body now there are a few little splotches aren't there she's got a few sort of random markings so I'm going to put those in now one or two and a few sort of wisps of hair coming from the spine a sort of central spine area wisping wisping over so I'm taking some of this black up there into the body <sighs> So that's how it's looking now, right? I'm going to add a bit more of that blue because it's now that we've got the black on, it's sort of dull, doesn't it? It's lost its significance. Uh, it's not as strong as it was. So, a bit more of that blue in there. And a bit more on the spine as well. And let's tip, see, you can see the moisture. Let's tip that. Let that have a little run as well. See the moisture there? Because I've still got moisture in the neck uh, and the back. That's always looking now, okay? I want to add some stronger black now. So I'm going to go for my sort of half inch flat brush, moisten it. Now I'm picking up some um, Payne's Grey. Now students of mine will think, my goodness, Alison's using Payne's Grey, that's like unheard of. But for this goat, I think it really does it. So I'm going in now, doing this darkest black in this Payne's Grey in places. I want a bit more of a dark shadow on the tail stump there and a darker shadow um, the, f the leg there and the, f the sort of push of the body that's sitting above the leg under the neck here I'm going to go much darker now back into the face. So I'm putting this extra Payne's Grey sort of dark mix on. But as you can see, I'm leaving the previous wash have a bit of a skirt. I'm not putting this black fully onto the first wash, but I am going to let it run. So I'm holding it at 90 degrees to the table and letting this new black run in because there's still some moisture in the paper, see? See that moisture? It's not a wash with moisture, but it's enough to give me a soft fusion of this new black. Now that's just going to creep and feather, you see? That feathering that it's doing. And when you want it to stop feathering and travelling, just lay it flat and it won't go too far. <coughs> Right, so let's get back back up in around the ear now and the head. And I want to make a strong swoosh there because that's where the neck separates this side of the body into that side of the body. So I want this one, maybe even have a bit more tufty fur there to break it, you know, to make that sort of ridge. And then that side of the black will end up being paler because that's the sunstruck side of the goat. But this side, and I'm only leaving a few little areas of, of paleness to suggest um, light from above striking this leg of the goat because that bit of paleness brings it away from the body. And there's a bit of a highlight there because that would probably be light catching his shoulder as his shoulder sort of bulges out. So I'm only trying to suggest form in the simplest ways. 
Right, now that we've got that, and I quite like that uh, little bleed thing that's going on there, see? Quite like that. I, I like it because it looks sort of painterly, all right? So I still feel like I need a bit more shadow on this left-hand side. So I'm going to rinse the size six brush, round brush. Picking up a soft little tiny bit of grey and just tentatively, yeah, see that's a bit darker and I'm, it's still moist, you see the goat now. It's still moist. So I can just get away with painting some, this little crescent of shadow. And now if I tip that at 90 degrees, that will bleed up in to the body without my brush strokes. Because brush strokes tend to leave plops of water. So I'm just letting that bleed up. Okay, so I hope that's, um, that's a bit better there now. Okay, so I th I've finished with the painting now. I'm going to now use a bit of credit card. <coughs> and as the paint is drying, I I'm going to flick out some texture of the goat's fur. So... I wanted to get a nice, uh, and, and, and every time you need to wipe out that paint off your credit card. Um, it's a bit wet yet, you see. So uh, I'm going to scrape in some whiter areas. I don't want to overdo it, otherwise it's going to look like a railway track, isn't it? So, don't go too mad with it. Um, let's take that one there, right, that's it. And maybe a few, see how it can get too, too rigid, you see? It gets a little bit too contrived, so just be very judicious with this. It's good for flicking out breakaway fur, right, on on the neck and stuff. But again, make sure they some some curve up, some curve over, arches, so that you haven't got too too much of a stylized look. All right, so I'm going to dry him now, and I think I finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll get the pack ready so that you can, you know, paint along with the live stream when I come to do it. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry, back again. I can see that some of my uh, scrapings are catching the eye a bit too much. So I want to correct some of those. So if you have the same problem, get... Um, a half inch flat brush, moisten it and dry it and get it into back shape like that. Then holding it at a sort of flattish angle to the paper, just fudge over it, you know, just fudge it, blend it in, just very lightly, like an angel's touch, softening any marks, then rinse it. Rinse it because you've picked up a lot of colour now and go, go in again. So again, very softly I'm going to just try and smudge away some of those strokes, uh, scrapings I did on the neck which are looking far too artificial and stylized. I don't like them. So I'll leave some in evidence but not all. And again, so I'm using this brush like this very softly, hardly letting it touch the paper. And I can just reduce the effect of that and just smudge it over a bit. It's still a bit moist, see? Still a bit moist. <coughs> and I'm just going to drag, there's a big lump of black on the tail and I just want to drag that softly, blend it in a bit more to the, the sheep, the goat's bottom. A bit more, or the ram's bottom, as they say. Right. 
so that's a bit softer now I, I like that a bit more and I'm gonna tentatively I might be I might blow it um oh god yeah see that's far too black right I was gonna put in some of those nice markings that the goat has got but now I've botched that so I'll have to wipe it out there's a few more markings that she's got over there as well so I, I quite like those breakaway markings so now because they're a bit too evident I'm going to rinse my brush again wipe my brush again on a cloth and now soften these that I need to correct so very lightly just touch into them very lightly use the other side of the brush which has less paint on it now and just soften that away so it doesn't look too eye catching so you can always reduce the effect of something rinse your brush after each correction there yeah. and this one's too thin isn't it so I'm gonna touch into it and maybe put some more strokes of it by the side of it and just spread the mistake a bit more softly right I think those markings look a bit better now <clears throat> right I'm happy with that goat. I love goats. So I hope you've enjoyed doing that. I feel we've got a nice plump goat. Maybe she's pregnant. I don't know. She looks quite full there, doesn't she? I don't know if this is a girl goat. I'm not very up on goats, even though I love them, but I don't know the you know, sort of biology of them very well. So I really enjoyed doing this with you. Um, so sitting down goat might be nice to paint a little scene with some goats sitting, some goats standing, and some sort of frolicking about like they do. Okay, I'll get everything ready so that you can get the pack to paint along with this, the outline and the reference photo and everything and the colours. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm Alison the Potter and Artist. If you want a free little mini micro course to do during lockdown, there's a link in the description below in the text have a look at it click it follow the instructions get my free email newsletter sign into my academy and it'll be there for you it's only an hour's course or so but it'll give you you can dip your toe into watercolor see if you like it um, I hold your hand all the way showing you this little technique and um, then you can see if there's any other courses of mine you'd like to do um, on the courses you get a lot of one-to-one -one input, personal critiques and a lot of coaching. Okay, meantime you can enjoy my free videos on YouTube. Right, thanks for watching, bye for now.